every who down in Whoville like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may be that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve just hating the foos, staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. They're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow's Christmas is practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the who girls and boys would wake up right and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, noise, noise. The one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. The who young and old would sit down to a feast. They'd feast, they'd feast, they'd feast, 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 feast. They would start on who peed pudding and who roast beast, which was something that Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the Grinch thought it was the worst Christmas sing. The more the Grinch thought, I must stop the whole thing. For 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Aha! Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. He quickly made a Santa Claus hat and a coat. He chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick with this coat and a hat. I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer were scarce, there were none to be found. But did that stop the Grinch? No! The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll have to make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded up some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hooked up old Max. And the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down towards the home where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. And their windows were dark, quite snow <clears throat> filled the air. When the Who's were all dreaming, their dreams without care. And he came to the first house on the square. This is house number one. The old Grinch, Grinchy Claws hissed. And he climbed to the roof, an empty bag in his fist. And he slid down the chimney, <laughs> a rather tight pinch. But if Santa can do it, so could the Grinch. And he struck only once. A, he stuck only once for a moment or two. He stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where little stockings all hung in a row. These stockings are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room he took every present. The pop guns and bicycles, roller skates and drums, checkerboards and tricycles, popcorn and plums. He stuffed them in bags, and the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, the Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And that. Now, said the Grinch, it's time to stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove and he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. And he turned around fast and he saw a small who, Cindy Lou who, that was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this little who daughter who had gotten out of bed for a cold cup of water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why are you taking our tree? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick that he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. 
There is a light on this tree that only goes on one side, so I'm taking it up to my workshop, and I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. Here. Then I'll bring it back here. His fib fooled the child. He patted her head, and he got her a drink, and sent her to bed. When Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for the fire. He went up the chimney himself, that old liar. On the walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same things to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouse. It was a quarter past dawn, and all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze, so they packed up his sled, he packed up their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up on the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode to the tippity top to dump it. Poo -poo to the who's. He was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're waking up, I don't know just what they'll do. Their mouse will hang open for a minute or two, and then and the all cry boo hoo hoo hoo. That it's simply a sound that I that I must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear sound raising over the snow. It started out low, and then it started to grow. The sound wasn't sad. Why the sound was very merry. It couldn't be so. It was so very merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, and he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing, without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it just came the same. The Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came with without uh, oh, bags. It came without boxes or or or, or strings or or or, 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 or uh, tags. And he puzzled for three hours. Tis a puzzler was sore, and the Grinch thought of something that he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas isn't from a store. Maybe Christmas means a little bit more. What happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day, and the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light to bring back the presents, the toys, and the food for the feast, and he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast.